storytelling and debate at the 2023 Global Health Film Festival. Hi, my name is Payman and I'm a preventive and social medicine specialist and a professor at Tehran University of Medical Sciences. In this channel, I wanna summarize a recently published paper from the Lancet Journal. You know that in previous videos, we spoke about some different topics like Gaza, decriminalization of drugs, and the struggle for health. And for today, I've selected a specific paper called Storytelling and Debate at the 2023 Global Health Film Festival. It was published in the Lancet Journal and its issue number is 10417 and it was released on December 2nd, 2023. The type of paper is perspective and it's about a film. Jerry McGee founded the Global Health Film Festival in 2015. Her aim was to introduce science-based stories to more audiences. Recently, the ninth annual festival was held in the UK and she says, a convening space bringing together hundreds of global health professionals, thought leaders, policy makers, students and filmmakers from all around the world to experience really great storytelling together to discuss and debate the issues and the solutions and to forge collaborations at the intersection of art and health. She also says, we are often talking to filmmakers about their projects up to five years ahead of them hitting the big screen. The 2023 festival was hybrid. I mean, it was held both in person and live stream and it reviewed 20 different movies regarding planetary health, global mental health, food systems, the climate crisis, refugee and migrant health, and access to healthcare. McHugh tells that the common denominator of all of these movies is storytelling around issues of power, agency, equity, justice in all settings all around the world. In this paper of The Lancet, the author would like to explain three different films. The first one is Phantom Parrot. Its director was Kate Stonehill and it is going to show the terrible impacts of Schedule 7 of the UK Terrorism Act. This act gives power to police to stop, search and hold people across the UK's border surveillance. The film tells the story of Mohammad Rabbani, who is a British human rights activist. He was detained, questioned, and arrested at London's Heathrow Airport when he was coming back to his home from a research trip in Doha, Qatar. The movie shows Rabbani's conviction as a terrorist and his fight to prove his innocence. The film shows how these laws not only have been used for suspected terrorists, but also have targeted human rights activists and journalists. Surprisingly, since 2022, these powers have been extended to refugees and migrants who come to the UK by small boats. The second film is Pay or Die, which was jointly directed by Scott 
Alexander Ruderman and Rachel Dyer. The film focuses on the high price of insulin made by three pharmaceutical companies in the USA. It shows the fatal consequences for diabetics who cannot afford insulin. It also depicts some of the patient's family's efforts to make legislations for supporting the patients. Pay or die underscores on affordability of insulin in the USA compared with other countries. The last movie is 1001 Days and its directors were Kelly White and Kethive Kobo. The movie shows a newborn home visits program in Alexandre, South Africa, a community affected by unemployment, poverty, and a high burden of HIV. The film depicts how some local women support mothers and babies in that community. To wrap up this video, I refer to one of the McHugh's statements which resembles this festival as a springboard for really rich and profound discussion and exploration. Many thanks for your attention. If you are interested, please like it and subscribe to this video channel. In this channel, I want to summarize a recently published paper from the Lancet journals. Please send your comments to me. Many thanks.